Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Angela. And Ryan. From RNA Music. That's right. To our favorite mom and pop guitar shop. Your favorite pop and mom. Pop and mom. And Music Lesson Studio, where we keep the music alive mm -hmm. for the next generation. For all deep, them folks out there. Deep in the heart of Texas. You may have figured that out by now. We're in mm -hmm. Texas. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Just had snacks. So Just had some snacks. Awesome. I got some poppity corn. Yeah. Got some poppity corn in my tooth. In my tooth. <clears throat> Too. And we are here to answer your questions. All them questions. It's our weekly Ask RNA video. And we're here to answer your questions. So, let's get started. Okay. I'm so excited. Are you? I, I am. Super excited. Okay. Let's do this. That's right, y'all. It is Ask RNA time. We're going to answer your questions. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Thank you so much for being here and watching, commenting if you do, but it's okay if you watch and don't comment. Yes. It's fine. But if you would, give us a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the videos, it helps with the algorithm stuff. And mm -hmm. if you don't want to miss a video, please click the little bell. Bing. You'll get notified of all our videos. You won't miss any of the down home Texas excitement. <laughs> and let's get to our first question. Oh, and if you would like an RNA Music t-shirt, we have a store on Teespring, there's a link in the description of this video. You can go check out our swaggity swag. Yep. RNA Music swaggity swag. And get you some if you want. Get you some. Help support the channel. We appreciate it. All right. First question Just Fun Guitar. <laughs> I had an uh, itchy mustache. Just Fun Guitar in the motherland mm -hmm. of Englandshire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great answers, both. Hashtag zombie. I like El Super Bisto from Rob Zombie. Mm -hmm. New questions. One, how did you come up with the hashtag, hashtag KTMA? Which guitar in your collection has had the most fret jobs so far? Mm -hmm. Great questions. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, do you want to take that first one? Um, I honestly, I think we did keep the music alive. Ryan did that. Yeah. We've been saying keep the music alive, which is yes. a catchphrase we've had for... A long time. Yeah, since almost the beginning. I don't even know how um, long. Yeah, I don't either. Um, but I think one of our viewers did hashtag KTMA. They're the ones it. who <clears throat> actually came up with a hashtag of it. We were like, oh, that's the okay. It's good. I like that. <laughs> we weren't clever enough to catch that in the first, you know, the first go around and yeah. doing. Um, so yeah, that's where. I don't it. remember who it was, but someone has asked this before. Yes. And whoever it's the one of our, um, yeah older either Walking Dead or one of our longtime viewers is like that Joseph was me McCarthy or yeah one of those guys have one of our older viewers the ones who've been with us the longest not yeah. older but the longest viewers they a long time viewer yeah long time viewer is the one who started came up with that I thought that's yes. brilliant we're gonna yeah. keep using that so that's mm -hmm. that's a big part of our mission statement really i guess yeah if, it is. if i sat down and wrote one out like i'm supposed to yeah like all good business owners do it's... yeah i think we're going to probably do a ktma t-shirt yeah you we know? talked about it mm -hmm. i'd like to be good. i mean only the people who watch us will know what that means what does that mean who you knows know? what else that could mean but uh... yeah we might do like big hashtag ktma and then script keep the music alive underneath rna it. music ktma uh -huh. people are like what's that mean start googling it <laughs> yes exactly but yeah we did not uh some amazing long time mm -hmm. viewer came up with the uh yeah shortened version of keep the music alive yeah but if you go to like instagram Is that an acronym? yes acronym. i think so if if you go to like instagram or something like that and you type in hashtag ktma it'll be a martial arts oh is it mm -hmm. it's actually like a um Rob on something in martial arts studio. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Because I actually clicked on it one day and I was like, Korean I Taekwondo martial arts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it was, uh, I clicked on it one day and I was Kids like, Kids take martial arts. And you know, like all this martial arts, and then every once in a while you saw me and Ryan. <laughs> and a martial, then martial artist. arts, martial arts, and then me and Ryan, like, do, 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 yeah. <laughs> figure out the thing. We should totally take that over, and those martial arts people would be like, Who are these, ah. who are these musicians? <laughs> like, flood the market with yeah. Ryan and Angela KTMA. Yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> uh, part two of his question was Which guitar in your collection has had the most fret jobs so far? Mm -hmm. <laughs> None. 
Like, yeah. None of my guitars have had. Um, not any real fret. Actually, I have had one guitar that it was did, like a pre fret though. It was a like a crown and a level, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I have a Chapman ML2 mm -hmm. <laughs> that I bought uh, before we were dealers, before yeah. there were any, any American dealers, and before we had the first guitars for sale in America. <laughs> yeah. At ordering R and A music, um, something was going on. I think it had a high fret. Because I had, you know, you know, one string was sort of buzzing out, and so you know, I had a couple of high frets, yeah. and so I took it to my friends at Action Sound in Hawkins, hey Texas, guys. and Caleb Strohshine uh, did basically like a, a fret level and dress on it, just and kind of reseated, reseated all the frets and got them all level and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't mm -hmm. getting that crazy thing. It wasn't from like overplaying, like I play it so much it has divots in the frets. It was just. Yes, no. It uh, it uh, you know for a relatively new guitar that I'd had probably less than a year or maybe a year, <laughs> it just needed some fret dressing and stuff. Right now, my Gibson Explorer that I've owned since I was sixteen, yeah, my '91 Gibson Explorer could probably use a uh, you know a fret job because the first four and five frets for sure. I mean, it's definitely got some divots. Yeah. From, you know, the G chords and the C chords. And it it actually needs probably some fret attention because mm -hmm. of just being... I played the crap out of that thing when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I don't play it so much now. I still play it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still playable. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely those those first four or five frets. Like, you can tell it's got, it's got some significant fret wear on it. But right. I was about to say, it's like, I don't think I've ever had any of them. But I, I had to get that, uh, that ML2... Address because I wanted to keep it, you know, I wasn't going to get rid of it, mm -hmm. but to make it playable, I had to have something done to it, and uh, I don't even play it that much. But, anyways, right. that's the only one I've actually had any real fretwork done to. There you go. Thanks for the question, Just Fun Guitar. Next question mm -hmm. Terry Himes, hashtag zombie. Have you seen Robert Baker's video of his Gibson ES335 Pro? He loves it. I just can't believe Texans are not into semi-hollow guitars. When I think of Texas, I'm thinking of Texas swing, etc. Why not a semi-hollow guitar? Right. There was that, I, Texas. I, I edited uh, Terry's comment down. He was quite extensive. <laughs> he was quite, you know, talking about like because we talked about 335s and semi-hollows last week's Ask RNA. You can go check it out if you want in the playlist. Mm -hmm. um, now. It's not like nobody in Texas plays semi-hollows. I don't, and that's all that matters. Yeah, but we don't, and that's all that matters. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just like locally in our area, right. there is not a big demand for it. Now, that doesn't mean there's not in other parts of Texas, which is relatively huge, mm -hmm. as you may know. Huge. I'm sure in Austin, there's a lot of semi-hollow players. I know there's some dudes in Dallas. I think it probably just depends on your, your style of music, too. You was talking about Texas Swing... You know, and that's that's not really a big deal around yeah. here anymore. He's talking about in the seventies and eighties and stuff, but like oh, of course. now, I mean like right now, mm -hmm. locally, mm -hmm. like it's country. You know, people are playing tellies. Little bit country. People are playing strats and tellies and solid body electrics and people are playing a lot of acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. not a lot of semi hollows. I don't know. Raw. I have seen Robert Baker's video about his three thirty five pro. He does seem to love it. Quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Good for Robert. I'm glad. And he sounds great. <laughs> he makes it sound great. That's for sure. That's a little bit more of a rocking one. It's a little bit more rock. And that's why uh, Robert definitely likes it. It's got the pickups mm -hmm. for that. So, But yeah. It may just be a regional thing here, Terry. But also, that style of music you're talking about, I don't think is quite as big these days as it was many years ago. So. Right. There you go. Supply and demand. Supply and yeah. demand. True, true. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks for the question, Terry. Appreciate it. Yes. Next question. Andrew Stothard. Hashtag zombie. What oh. did people do in Texas before Aircon was available? I think Andrew must be in England because he says Aircon. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I could be wrong. You might be here. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the same thing everybody else did before air conditioning was available. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, hold on. I need to take a drink.
Mostly, I think we had siestas. You know what yeah. siestas are, right? Yeah. Those are big in Mexico, but also... They're big in South Texas. They're big in they're everywhere. Where it's like 120 degrees. Yeah, where it's a million degrees. If you're not familiar with siestas, that's usually the time of day between noonish and 3 or 4, probably. <laughs> between <laughs> noon and 3 and 4. Day. It's the heat of the day. The not hottest really. part of the day. The heat of the day is like 5 up here. It's just hot. Like between 4 and like 5. Like after, after noon. 7 and 5. Yeah. Like seven in the morning. See, this is the time of day where you kind of take a break and you stay indoors or stay no. under a shade tree or you stay yes. out of the sun because it's super intense. Yes. Oh. Uh, why do people like me? Um. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Siestas. Uh-huh. And then... <laughs> um, the same thing everybody else did. Before air conditioning was invented, everybody was just acclimated yeah. to the weather. It's like you're just used to it because it's right. every single day there was no it's air conditioning. It's called going swimming. That's how they did. They got they used hose, water, sprinkles, sprinkling Swimming system, in a pond. Swimming in a pond and siestas. Yeah. That's what they did. But now that we're used to air conditioning. Hurting you. Yes, I mean we are for the last hundred years or last fifty years, and usually probably, you know, gathered in places where they had, you know, fans, large fans, or something like that. They fanned. We fanned ourselves constantly, yeah. like had this, the, had like the, nonstop. Had the little hand fans. My grandparents had one in their like, church for years in Alabama when I was a kid. Not my grandma had like a fan, just like you, because they didn't have central heating or air. Mm -mm. They had like a pot belly stove in the in the corner, and that was until the nineties. <laughs> they mm -hmm. didn't have anything, you know. So you everybody had there was a fan with the program for the church, like the itinerary for the church. They would have fans, Little fans you sitting, could grab, or they would have them in the back with the hymnals and the place to put your communion cup or your pen, and they would have fans. And you, you had strong a arms and picture wrists of Jesus from... on one side, and then a. And a prayer on the other. Because that's and what you yourself. needed. You needed some Jesus and a prayer. <sighs> yeah. I mean, when it's 105 degrees outside, that's hot. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't care who you are. Yeah. Aiden and I are supposed to, because right now in, in Texas, I don't know where it is. I know it's mostly the south. But in Texas, it, the hottest we have is usually August. Mm-hmm. August, September. July like, sometimes. Is... July sometimes, yeah. And then, But it's really like August heat. And getting in like the football season is always hot at the beginning of football season. Yeah. So, and we've reached 100 degree days. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the heat index weeks. has been the 100 degree days. Um, Celsius, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. <laughs> um, yeah. 100 <clears throat> F. Yes. Um, we were going to get micro micro <laughs> microwave popcorn. I can't talk today. Microwave popcorn and sit it in the window of the car and see how much popcorn can get popped. Because even though it's 100 degrees yeah, outside, in the car, in the car it can with get... With all the glass, it can get... It can ooh. get like an oven. So that was going to be our science That was going to be a really fun summer. science experiment. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go, Andrew. Name's the question, man. Next question, Dave Weiss. Mm -hmm. Greetings. I was at a music store near my old hometown in northern Wisconsin... Where it's mm -hmm. probably a little bit cooler. And they had a CMG guitar. The guy working there never tried it. So we ran it through a BD2 into a Boss amp and we're both thoroughly impressed. I was wondering what pickups CMG is using. Awesome. Great question, man. It's funny. The guy working there never tried a guitar that was in his mm -hmm. store. Um, you know, it really kind of depends. It's hard to say without looking at the guitar because... A lot of the CMGs, if it was $7.99, like if it was a $7.99 price tag, mm -hmm. it was probably the Frog Dog pickups, which is CMG's own line mm -hmm. of Frog Dogs. And they have some Korean-made Frog Dogs, and there are some USA-made Frog Dogs. Mm -hmm. if, if the guitar was $7.99, it was probably the Korean-made Frog Dogs. Yeah. I would, I would venture to guess. And they're they're the flat face pickups, and they're actually very very good. I I left them in our CMG, mm -hmm. our anniversary CMG for a long time. I just recently in the past year finally swapped out those pickups, but they're very flat response. They don't add too much mids or highs or lows or um, 
or anything. So it's the frog dog mm -hmm. pickups. Um, it could be, however, depending on the price point, if it was a custom order or something, because they have used DiMarzios. They have a deal with DiMarzio. So some of their some of their guitars will have DiMarzios. Um, you know, they may have some Seymour Duncans. So they have a they have a deal with Seymour Duncan and DiMarzio. They they're not actually EMG dealers, and so typically they're not. If they have EMGs in the CMG, it came from RNA, probably, mm -hmm. <laughs> or they order their EMG CMG orders their EMGs from RNA. Mm -hmm. I've I've mm -hmm. sent them. We're an EMG dealer, so I've sent them some EMGs for someone else. But yeah, but yeah, probably the the Frog Docs would be my guess, which are great pickups, you know. And so, and for anybody who's like, "What's well, not American made?" I'm like, "Well, you know, my PRS S2, mm -hmm. which is a much more expensive guitar. PRS S2, which is fourteen hundred dollars. I mean, the pickups in it are like Korean made pickups." Right. But the woodwork and all the painting and all that stuff is, mm -hmm. you know, fabrication was all done in the USA. So, right. There you go. Next question. Uh, <laughs> um, Dale Palmer, do many seniors take lessons at RNA? Hashtag zombie. Zombie. I thought, does he mean like seniors in high school? Mm -hmm. High school. I want to go to high school. We have two seniors this year. But then I thought maybe he means older people. Oh. Who are oh. not 30 years old. Like uh -huh. 55 plus. Is that are you a senior at 55? Or I, do you have to be 60, 65 to be a senior? I senior citizen. I don't discount. know when it starts, 55 or 65. I'm looking you, forward to that. <laughs> when do you get a discount at Denny's on your meal? It's like 55? Mm -hmm. I think so. Maybe. <laughs> That's pretty sad. <laughs> 50 is the new 40, I think. I think so, too. Or the new 35. Um, um, do we have senior citizens? Senior citizens. Uh, yes. We have We have had and do have mm -hmm. some uh, more mature students. Yes. I like to think of it. Our, our right. oldest student I think we've ever had was Mr. John, and he was yes. 78 <laughs> mm -hmm. when he started. Yes. Started taking lessons at 78. Took think. lessons for about a year and a half or yeah. a year. Mm -hmm. Until he had to stop because his wife had so many health problems and he was constantly taking her to doctor's appointments in Dallas two, three times a week. And yeah. Sweet take, man. Yeah. He's a stud. Great guy. I still see him every now and then at Walmart. I don't think he recognizes me now. Yeah. But he would be like 85. Yeah. So, but he was a stud. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was Sheila who yeah. was, how old was Sheila? Late 50s? She was in a, she was... 60. A couple years younger than mom. So, yeah. Probably late 50s, early mm -hmm. 60s. I've had uh, several dudes in their 50s. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't consider guys. that. 50 is not very old. Mm -mm. You know. <laughs> Since we're only a Since decade, I'm, you know, a decade I'm a, away. I'm only less seven, than a decade. seven years away from 50. I'm like, 50 is young. 50 is so oh young. Oh my gosh. Super young. Yeah. But yeah, we've had yeah. you know a lot of adults, actually. Yeah, quite Currently, right now, I have... Um, Susan. Mm-hmm. I don't know how is, old Susan is. I don't know is. how old Susan is either, but she has grandkids. Well, well my, my my cousin has grandkids. You could be in your and 40s and have grandkids, that's she's true. She's 38. <laughs> well, she just turned 39, and she's been a grandma for well, over a year. Her grandkids are teenagers. Or two, yeah. So. Right. When your grandkids are in their <laughs> your 20s. When your grandkids are like 15. Yeah, or older. Yeah. Then it's different, but not a toddler mm -hmm. anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and you've had our and, age are having grandkids, and you've had voice students that were yes, uh huh, in mature. their fifties and sixties. Yeah, mm -hmm. adults, have. grown ups, yes, and grown ups. We've had quite a few, and you know, I think a lot of people are forget that they can start stuff like that at any age. Really, it doesn't matter. The only thing that we come across that has become a commonality between them all is they don't have a lot of time. Not on this earth. <laughs> don't have a lot of time. Um, they don't have a lot of manageable time because they're so busy. A lot of them um, still, uh, almost all of them work full time or they're taking care of somebody and that's a full time job. Yes. And so to find the actual time to practice or to even come up here is hard, you know, when you're an adult. That's why kids usually take it because their parents dictate where they go and where they don't go. Yeah. So, um, but yes, we do. We've had quite a few 
over the years. That's true. The biggest challenge, I think, the adult students come. And I have some that are like, you know, their their kids are out of the house. And they're like, we got more free time now. Or they're semi-retired. Mm -hmm. Want a new hobby or something. Yeah. But that does tend to, to be the issue. And like one of my students right now is like, they're in the middle of building a house. Mm -hmm. So they're living like in a fifth wheel and they're building a house. And she's like, ah, oh, I didn't have time because we were putting up sheetrock this week. And I hurt my shoulder. And, mm -hmm. you know, grandkids, kids, medical, you know, helping so your time is, well, your time is always, that's always, it doesn't matter what, how old you are. Because I, right. <laughs> I have teenagers coming like, I didn't practice this week because I was really busy. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah? <laughs> what were you doing? I had homework. Oh, yeah? Every, every day? You know, or like, there's a myriad of excuses. I'm not even going to go into them. But yes. like, did you watch any TV or Netflix or YouTube or video games the at all week. in the last seven days? Uh, no. I'm like, yeah, you lying. <laughs> Did you get on your phone for Facebook or whatever. Yeah, but right. There, you can, if you can't find 15 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. in your day somewhere, mm -hmm. you're doing something wrong. Right. There's time. Yes, there is time. You got to find it, but there's time. Truth. But that's <clears throat> the biggest problem sometimes with adults because we do tend to have more responsibilities than a 13-year-old. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge sometimes. But mm -hmm. if you want to do it, you'll find the time. You sure will. That's all there is. Yep. You will find the time. Yep. Uh, thanks for the question, Dale. Appreciate it. Next question, Petco Pete. Thoughts on Yamaha Rev Star guitars, especially the RS620 or RS820? Worth the money? Question mark. Peace. Uh, I had a look at them. I was like, here's a picture. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not I'm not a mega fan of the shape, personally. Um, uh -huh. I don't know. I haven't I haven't played one. I mm -hmm. haven't put my hands on one, so it's hard to say whether they're worth it or not. Right. So I have to generalize, but in general, Yamaha makes great guitars. Mm -hmm. So even their more budget friendly, particularly their budget friendly guitars um all the ones i've come across when i worked at a big music store years ago and you know we've had a few yamaha used yamahas come through here uh you know i've done some restring setups on them mm -hmm. they make great stuff so i can only imagine that it's probably a great guitar right if you're into it aesthetically and all that sort of stuff it's probably great but uh you know i haven't played one or put my hands on one and tried one. And we're not Yamaha dealers, so I can't really say. However, maybe there are some people here watching this video who have played or own a Revstar yep. Yamaha. So if you guys do or have, please leave your comments below for Pet Pete and help him decide if they're worth the money. Thanks so much. All right, next question, Dr. Wacko Barbie. Waco. Wacko? Dang it. I don't think it's Waco. Waco. Two A's. That's a long sound. Wa. Sure. Right? I, I guess so. I accidentally figured out the secret word is hashtag zombie. What should I do? <laughs> Watch the whole video, Dr. Barbie. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you like Tone King amplifiers? Y'all have a very funny channel. <laughs> Thank you. Um... I've never tried Tone King amplifiers. Again, kind of like the Yamaha thing. I've never tried one in person, either at a trade show right. or at NAMM or at another guitar store somewhere. So mm -hmm. I cannot say. I have seen some videos, I think, just like a lot of you guys. I, mm -hmm. I peruse the YouTube from time to time looking at gear. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, I know you will. <laughs> They're more, those are more like single channel, clean type amps. Um, but I've never played one. That's not really my thing though. I'm, right. I'm more like, uh, I'm more into the gainy, mm -hmm. hard rocking, heavy metal type amps and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like a good clean tone, but getting an amp that has a, you know, superb clean tone and a super sick overdrive and distortion tones is very challenging. Mm-hmm. 
So that yes, is the is. tough. You know that's right. You know, Devil Cat does a great job on the Ginny. Jimmy's probably the best one I've come across. We got one. Some guy was testing it out today. He was in here playing guitar. He was trying out some guitars. He's like, I was in the middle of teaching a piano lesson. I was like, hey, plug into that devil cat, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. You need to try it. Like, there's not very many places you can go in person and test one. He's like, oh, okay. So right. he plugged into it. And then he was noodling and playing, you know, good guitar player. And then he came and like, sorry, do you want to bother you? He was like, yeah, that amp's awesome. And I'm like, I told you. He's like, wow, are you, you're a dealer, right? I'm like, yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you can always come back and check out the Devil Cats at R and Music. So yeah. Uh, so I, you know, Doctor Barbie. It's hard to say because I haven't ever played one. And mm -hmm. as much as I do love YouTube for all kinds of things, you know, with gear it's tough because how it sounds, right? You know, in a video is different. is not how everything sounds in person. That's true. You know, because <clears throat> there's compression in the YouTube algorithm. How you record it, even if you use nice mics and preamps and all that stuff to record the mm -hmm. audio, you just know how that sounds with that specific amp setup mm -hmm. and mic setup mm -hmm. and preamp and EQing that somebody did. Because mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you've heard stuff. Surely you've gone to a guitar store and you've tried out a, a pedal, particularly or an amp or whatever that you saw a video and I was like, that sounds awesome. And mm -hmm. then you played it at first and you're like, it sounds good, but it doesn't sound like that video, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's tough to say. But if anybody watching this has a Tone King amplifier, <laughs> let us know. Leave your comments for Dr. Wacko Barbie. Mm -hmm. And if I ever play one, I'll let you know. Thanks Thank for the you. question, Doc. Next question, Big John in Florida. Big Bad John. <laughs> Big Bad John. It's a hot in Florida right now. Hot oh my gosh. Good. Ugh. Hot and stanky. Mm -hmm. from sweat and mosquitoes and alligators. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I was watching the movie Airplane the other day. <laughs> are there any movies and you guys are there any movies that you guys thoroughly enjoyed that there's no way they could remake that movie today? Um I'm not sure if he means like they couldn't make it because it was too amazing the first time. That's why I initially thought, like, you can't redo that. Or I don't know if he's thinking, because he's talking about an airplane, if it's like, you cannot, it would be politically incorrect. It's like, you couldn't release Blazing Saddles, like, now, I don't think. Or certain, so I don't know if that's where he's going. It's like, oh, that was too People over are so top. sacrilegious and blasphemous, they won't care. Yeah. I mean, it might not do as well. It may not. But they can sell. totally release it. I mean, South Park is still on. Like, there's no limits anymore. No one cares I got about it. sacred things, you know. Um, but if it means that they should not remake something because it was so amazing the first time around. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. That's the first one I thought of. That's sacred ground right there. You cannot remake that movie. Nope. I and mean, they, you could, but it would be terrible. They should not make that movie. They should not even Because first it. of all, mo like there's a lot of people, maybe like four, three, three people in the movie that play actor. Of course, you know, the Prince Humperdinck's parents are probably gone, and so is probably the yeah. man who played Andre them. the Giant is no longer with us. Yeah, and Andre the Giant is no longer with us. Who would play that? Like, exactly. The Rock? No. I would, I would. Can't do it. I would boycott everything. If they put The Rock is Andre the Giant's character. I would set fire to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I will I will Facebook ask everybody to go to Hollywood and completely just You can't know, do it. LA riot them. Can't you can't be. you can't be Billy Crystal. You can't be like the whole You were saying Mandy Patinkin, you have just I mean everybody. Everybody. I mean it was a perfect movie. It was. Columbo, what's his name? Now, if they did like a continuation of the story where Wesley, a sequel. yes, where Wesley and Buttercup the children. were married and Their they had children. like a, you know, because um, Sean, uh, what's his name? Well, no, because he died in the movie. Um, Vincini. Vincini. He yeah. died in the movie. Um, but. A lot of the other... Inconceivable. Yes, all the other people 
are still alive. So if they went back to Mad Max, Billy Crystal could still play. And Valerie, I can't remember what the actress's name. She was a SNL lady. She could totally, she because she's still alive, she can be Valerie. Again. I think that would ruin it though. I was like, yeah, it would, it would be that would be terrible. Even if a yeah. sequel would be terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like even that would be crossing the line. You just have to leave it alone. Leave that alone, please, God, God, please, God, God. That's like Michael <laughs> please from God, no. no, no, God, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> please, God, no, or Tracy, no, 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 no. No, L no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Do not remake that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, that would be it. That was the one. That was my first thought. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't mess. With I don't that. think there's any other movie that I think of as so sacred, other than Star Wars, but that in and of itself has been just completely drug. Yeah, you can't. You couldn't redo that. You couldn't even make. If you couldn't even make good sequels. Yeah. You definitely can't do a good remake. Oh my gosh, yeah. I think remaking old movies is is dumb. Stupid. Ghostbusters yeah. was it, it and like going back to like the Reboots. old classic like Gone with the Wind or The Wizard of Oz. People have tried to do The Wizard of Oz. No one can do The Wizard of Oz like the original vaudeville rolled out cast of the Wizard mm -hmm. of Oz because they just had it. They nailed it, obviously, because it's still here after... Mm -hmm. People still watch it. Gosh, how long is it? Was it the 30s that Wizard of Oz came out? I really don't you like know? the fact that there's so many... Like, Disney's doing all these live-action remakes I know, so of... You know, the, their animated movies for classics, you know? Yeah. I mean, even, like, Lion King and Beauty and the Beast. Those aren't exactly... I don't consider them classic movies. They're Disney classics. Yes. You know, but they're not. Well, they are now because they're like 20 something. But years old. you try to redo <laughs> something like that. It was like them trying terrible. to do Mary Poppins. That was sacred to me, and they ruined it. They completely ruined Mary Poppins. I hated it. I hated it 100%. Um, yeah. They ruined it because no one, absolutely no one on this earth before or since can replace Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins. As Mary Poppins. Or as Julie Andrews. Or it's Julie Andrews. Right. It's like the when they try to do uh, The Sound of Music live on network television, and they had freaking Carrie Underwood playing Maria, Julie Andrews' character. She destroyed it, not in a good way, like, you know. Like a terrible way. It was horrible. It was, it was an abomination, and we should, you know. Burn it with fire. Yes. I have strong feelings about stuff like that. <laughs> if you can, tell. Tell me how you really feel, though. Don't hold back. But there are certain movies you just don't touch, mm -hmm. you know, because they already did so well. Why Why do it again? Move on. Make why? a new movie. Do something else. Why? Create something else that's brand new and awesome. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. There you go, Big John. Hope things are good. Yeah. You guys tell us what you think about that. Mm -hmm. What movies do you think cannot be redone? Mm -hmm. Or would be utter failures if they tried to redo them? Indiana Jones. Yeah. Terrible. Why would you do that? Even though they're coming out with another one. Even though they're going to try. <laughs> Next question. Walking Dead, 1369. Hashtag zombie. Say no, you were going no. on stage with a band. Who would be your picks for the rest of the band? Hmm. Alive or deceased? Yeah, we've had this question. We've had this question a couple of times. If yeah, we can have a band it. with anybody, because I think my my answer changes every time. Yeah, mine doesn't change very much. Obviously. Uh, number one would be Angela. Ah. Angela would be no, you got a singer. You got to no. Like... I learned my lesson last time when I didn't pick you for my band. No, you're, you're in the band. About friends. You're in the band. Yeah. Okay. You're in the band. Okay. Okay, along with. James Hetfield, mm -hmm. who is alive currently. Mm -hmm. uh, Dimebag Daryl, mm -hmm. who is not alive currently. Right. Or probably in the future, <laughs> unfortunately. You know some science that I don't know. <laughs> I do not know. I've watched Frankenstein. Yes. Frankenstein. That's another movie that should not be remade. Which, which one? The Gene Wilder. Oh, the, the comedy. Frankenstein, yes. Frankenstein. I thought you meant the... Uh... What hump? <laughs> Any of the other Frankenstein. I seen your hump on the other. 
Um, I was going to go with John Bonham on the drums. Okay. Which I think that would be pretty, pretty rad. Mm-hmm. Although, since Vinnie Paul is no longer with us, and I'm bringing back Dimebag Daryl to play in my band. That would be really nice, too. Reunited. Ah, so difficult. All right. Good. Uh, Vinnie Paul on drums. Okay. John Bonham on percussion. Mm-hmm. Who may also play drums. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Paul for bass. Okay. Oops, sorry. Your alarm went off. Yeah. What's your, what's that? Sorry. So there's my band. Mm-hmm. Me, Angela, James Hetfield, mm -hmm. Vinnie Paul, Die My Girl, and Paul. Okay. 18. All right, who's, who's in your band? I, oh, I don't like band questions because I don't pay attention to people who play instruments other than the people in my, my vicinity. So like me, Ryan, I'm in your band. Paul's in my band. Brianna. Yeah. I don't want, you know, like I can't name other than people that you've named. Like you would name the people. Right, because most I want to meet. like most vocalists that I listen to, they have studio musicians. They don't have, you know, it'd be like Sting on bass, Phil Collins on drums. I mean, who would you? <laughs> piano? Who would be your piano and player? And backup singer? Who's your piano player? Piano player Alicia Keys. What? I thought you'd say Billy Joel. Oh, Billy Joel. Oh no, he's a punk. Or I know, it's but then you could. Here for a pimp. He's but he'd be in your band, so you could berate him and call him names, and you have to take it. Take it! Backup singer Josh Groban. And he can be a piano player too. He plays awesome. What about players. what's his name? He's not not Billy Joel, but um Elton John. Elton John, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He sure would. Or <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> he was on like was it Good Morning America? John Tesh. <laughs> John Tesh on the keys. <laughs> Tickling the ivories. John, <laughs> John Tesh. Tesh. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Um, but yeah, probably. That would be awesome. I would like I would love Billy Joel, but he's such a jerk. I don't know he's if I'd such be able a to handle him. Face. Have to... Stop it. I'd like to have him just so I could punch him in the face. Yeah, that's what I think. Like you're such a jerk. Douche. Yes, and I would have like Adele and Josh Groban as Adele well. and Josh and Groban. Backup singers. There you go. Good plan. <laughs> Thanks for the question, walking in. Next question. Stephen Holt. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ryan and Angela. I got a good deal on Seymour Duncan Hot Rotted JB and Jazz Humbuckers. I was thinking of putting them in my Epiphone ES335 Pro. That's kind of like the Epiphone version of Robert Baker's guitar. Right. I've heard some people say the pickups are good in some guitars and bad in others. Mm. Is that a fair assessment? Is it a good idea to put them in my Epi S335? Thanks in advance. Well, that's a good question, Stephen. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is the sound is so subjective. Like what you think, what someone else thinks sounds like crap, you might be like, this is awesome. I love it. Right. So, or vice versa. Yeah. So, You're like, man, that sounds great. You're like, ah, no. They're like, no, really? Like, yeah. I don't think so. I'm not a big fan of the JB, although that's sort of a go-to pickup for Seymour Duncan. Mm -hmm. um, the JB and Jazz combo is a particular... I mean, that's sort of a classic combination of Seymour Duncan's. I don't care for those myself, personally. Right. I prefer the Custom Custom and the 59. Right. That's when it comes to the past of Seymour Duncan's. Those are the ones that I like the best. Are there aggressive Seymour Duncan's? Yeah, they have some super aggressive ones. <laughs> Is it passive? And it's passive aggressive. Or there, passive aggressive. <laughs> there are some very aggressive Seymour Duncan's. <laughs> I have those in that cross guitar. Mm -hmm. has El Diablos, which are quite aggressive. Yeah. They're passive aggressive. but uh, um, So... Man, I don't know. Like, the only way to know is to try it. Put them in, and if you like it, awesome. If you hate them, like, mm, take them back out. Just swap the pickups. Not, not too big of a deal. If you know how to do it yourself, you know, it's something that can be. Although three thirty fives, 
semi hollow guitar is a little bit more of a pain in the butt to do that kind of work on. So you do what you want. You do what you want. You do what you you do you boo. Yeah, but that's it's sub it's subjective. What you think is bad, someone else might love, and what someone else loves, you might think is bad, and you know. So or is it objective? Subjective or objective? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either, but... Words. I, I think some guitars, some pickups work better than other guitars, but that's mm -hmm. such just a personal thing, you know? Right. So... I guess I do. For you, it may not work, but for someone else, they may love it. And there, there you have it. Thanks for the question, Steven. You guys, please leave your thoughts and comments on that. If anybody has a semi-hollow guitar with a JB and a Jazz in it, right. leave your experience. In your comments. Okay, final question, which was actually a question from last week, but I didn't see it. Well, I'm scrolling through a hundred comments trying to find the questions, so uh, I skipped over it. Yeah. So this should have gone on last week's Ask RNA, but I found it, and we're going to do it this time. Tracy right. Johnson with the final, final question. Okay, question. String through body. Tremolo, wrapped tail, or fixed bridge? Which is good on a guitar? Mm. Agree with you both. If music is good, and it's it's good, right? Y'all be safe, God bless, and have a great week. Big smiles. Well, string through your body, tremolo, wrapped tail, or fixed bridge? Which is good on a guitar? All of the above. Yeah, again. <laughs> they all it's work. It's not like the same um, quit answer to the last question. Yeah. They all work. Mm -hmm. There's great. There are some great guitars with all those different tail pieces and bridges, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it works. And there are some that are bad. Like there's some tremolo guitars that that's terrible. Mm -hmm. Especially you know the the budget ones, the cheap ones are not so good. Um, so they're all great. My personal preference, which is all that any of us can really give. I kind of prefer a hardtail, not the string through the body. That's okay, I have, do I have any like that? Actually, I don't know if I do. I've restrung so many of those mm -hmm. string through, um, and we've stocked a lot of guitars that had that, but um, right. my personal preferred favorite is like the hardtail, you know, like a Tone Pros bridge and tail piece. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like those right. personally. I'm not real big on trim guitars. Okay. I just did a setup restring on a uh, Floyd Rose mm -hmm. yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah. such a pain in the butt Buggers. to do. Buggers. But you can have some fun and do some cool things with them with the Floyd. So yeah, I guess. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> but that's just my personal preference. So you guys tell us, and gals, which is your preferred bridge system on a guitar? Which do you like the most and why? Mine's the Golden Gate. <laughs> the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's quite nice. It's a little big. A little bit, a little bit too much it mass works for, for me. me. Well, it works. As long as it works for you, that's all that matters. All right. And those are all the questions for this week. Thank you guys for asking those. Thank you for all the comments from last week. We appreciate those. If you have a question for next week, please leave it as a question below in this video, and I'll try not to miss it when I'm selecting the questions for next week. Yep. No promises, but I will try. Yes. And if you made it this far in this video, because they're all, they've all been about an hour long now for the longest time, and we want to hey, make sure. Yeah, we're so tired. No, it's okay. It's been yeah. great. I like talking. Yeah. We should do t two secret hashtags of the day. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of people just see other people's comments with a hashtag, and like, I'm going to I don't even have to watch the video. I know what the secret hashtag is. Right. Yeah. I think. I don't know if that's happening or not, but I think it is. But if you made it through this entire video from beginning to end, watch the whole thing, runtime, first of all, that really helps out our channel and helps. Sometimes YouTube will go, wow, a lot of people are watching this video for a long time. Let's kind of put it in front of more eyeballs. That helps us. But if you made it through the end of this whole thing, you watched it, please type out a special hashtag. Hash. Hashtag, 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 so we know that uh, you made it through the whole video. Mm -hmm. And what is that hashtag? What should it be? Any what thoughts? What should it be? The secret hashtag today is hashtag seniors. 
uh, type that out in the comment section below and we will know that you made it all the way through this video to the very end <clears throat> and that we think you are a legend and we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. So, hashtag senior, type that out. We would appreciate it. It's our little secret just between us and you guys. <laughs> and please stay tuned until the next video. Until then, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. The music needs you. You need the music. We need the music and we need to keep it alive for the next generation. That's right. Of musicians coming up and current generations too. Current <laughs> generations need the music. Yes, Thank you guys so much for the support. We appreciate it. Check Ooh. out our Teespring link. Get you some swaggity swag. Get you swag. Girl. People have been getting some. People have been getting some lately. I look at this. Hey, we sold a hoodie. Hey, we sold a t-shirt. Hey. So it's great. Appreciate it. And we'll see you guys in the next video. I'm so excited. I had a thought and it left me. I need, um, a, I need another drink of my big, diet, diet Coke cup. vanilla. Big cup, big cup. Ooh, that smells like a, a dreamsicle. <coughs> Take off your nose. It went down the wrong pipe. Right down the wrong um, Oh, that'd be another one. And now for the rest of you who made it to the end this far, there's a second secret hashtag. If you made it this far, Mm -hmm. The second secret hashtag is hashtag big cup. <laughs> hashtag big cup. Boop, boop. And we'll know that you watched this far and that you're not cheating and you're actually watching. Super secret. So sneaky. There's two secret hashtags. <laughs> and we'll see you all next time. Bye, guys. Choking! Choking on coke! <laughs> <laughs>